starting a little early today. Um, pretty good day. I have to work from home today, so I'm able to get on a little bit earlier than usual. But um, just wanted to start off as normal on Fridays. I like to start off by talking about video game news. Uh, and this week I thought was uh, pretty interesting. So let's get started with that. <clears throat> I've got everything on my tablet here, so if I'm looking down a lot, that's what I'm looking at. Um, great. So the loot, the loot box controversy. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't heard anything about this, then uh, I don't know where you've been in the realm of video games. The loot box controversy got uh, bubbled up to the surface again today, uh, or not today, but this week, because the there was a French gr gambling regulator that um, that recently said that it it's kind of in a murky gray area in France um, because like it's available to the public and it uses probabilistic gains. A couple other things I'll have to I'll send links to the exact details on that. Um, but they came out saying they won't take legal actions against le against loot boxes, but that they they are concerned about them. Um, that caused everybody to to pick their sides again and say whether or not they like loot boxes or not. Um, GameSpot's got a pretty cool uh, versus show that I watch regularly, and they talk about one side or the other about loot boxes. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm okay with loot boxes personally. Um, I think that they are a way to bridge the pay gap, considering video games have been stuck at sixty dollars for thirteen years now, and um, and the cost to make video games has increased uh, due to regular inflation as well as people putting more money into them to get bigger budget games. Um, and I think this and loot boxes are one way to do that. Um, I do have stipulations on whether or not <clears throat> on you know what is good and what is bad in a loot box. Uh, <clears throat> I do hold Overwatch as probably the pinnacle loot box, considering they invented them. I think they invented them. Pardon me, I got something caught in my throat. But, um... <clears throat> yeah. Um, they have it so that the loot box is randomized, and there's a relatively... there's a chance of duplicates. And if you get something that you that is duplicate, duplicative or that you don't like, you can break it down into an in-game currency, and then use that in-game currency to buy exactly what you do want. Um, I think that's the best way. In the Destiny 2 model, it's you break down, you might get... <clears throat> I think you could... Well, maybe they can buy it. You can buy directly what you want, but the rates of getting the currency is really minimal. Destiny 2 didn't really do it well. Obviously, Battlefront 2 is the big, uh, big one who did it wrong, considering it would take, I don't know, someone at launch... 60 hours or six maybe i'm off by a factor of 10 there to like earn one skin um by just loot box grinding uh <clears throat> one of the ways that i think is bad is like if something if you break something down and that if you don't like what's in a loot box you break it down and then you uh, and then you get another re-roll. Like, re-rolling loot boxes are terrible because you're getting one randomized roll and using it to pay for another randomized roll. That's bad. Um, so, yeah, everybody kind of bumped up and, and perked up video games. Another country, you know, Belgium's already come out against them. Is Australia somewhere on the... I think Australia's somewhere on there. You got the delegate from Hawaii who thinks that they're illegal um, and gambling. And I don't quite know if I would go that far. Um, no more gambling than card packs are, Pokemon cards, Magic cards. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe it's... I don't want to go slippery slope, but if you start regulating one randomized pack, you might have to start regulating them all. And, yeah, I don't know how that works. Um, but... There is one true thing that, like, I saw at E3 is that all these devs were coming out saying loot boxes, you know, this game doesn't have loot boxes, you don't have to worry about it, no season pass, no map packs, 
Um, and so I think the the community gaming or otherwise have come out against loot boxes and now it's like a four letter word. Um, and so that would, I do appreciate that like enough people can say, I don't like this in my game and they can change the culture. Um, and that bring that kind of segues me into my next topic, cross play. So over the past couple of weeks, uh, we've been seeing a lot of shots at, at cross play specifically at Sony and their lack of crossplay. Um, I think it started with, I don't know if it was Minecraft first. Minecraft came out and they said, hey, we can play together in Minecraft across Nintendo Switch, PC, and, and uh, Xbox. And they had a really good ad that showed like green and red. And then it was just like, play together. And it was a pretty, <laughs> it was a pretty good shot at Sony. And it was a pretty good showcase that, like, hey, we're willing to bridge the gap. Um, so then after that, you had the epic debacle uh, where uh, Fortnite launched on Switch, but you couldn't, if your Fortnite account was created on PS4, you couldn't use it on Switch. You couldn't transfer accounts from PS4 to other places um, if you wanted to play there. And it just turned into a big mess around the Fortnite launch on the Switch. And again, that was all based on Sony's problem with crossplay. Um, and then, uh, last but not least, this week Bethesda is saying that they want to do crossplay on Fallout 76. And they and I think it was Todd Howard who specifically said Sony is causing a problem. They're being a pain when it comes to crossplay. Um, so all of this comes. Uh, you know, the big segue from the last issue was, you know, the community can change how the gaming community can change how loot boxes are handled. Can they affect how they how um, crossplay is handled? And I think with enough pressure from enough big big developers, um, they might be able to make a case for it. Now, Sony is the platform leader um, in this chip console generation. I don't know. I understand them not wanting to give that up by allowing people to play uh, games on any console. Um, but I think people are still going to pick the Sony PlayStation or the PS4 because of all the exclusives. I think they still have the firmest grasp on exclusives. Um, you know, I might argue for Nintendo Switch, but I'm not going to play a first-person shoot. Well... I don't think I would play a first-person shooter on the Switch. Um, and so if you want hardcore, next-gen, highly graphical, console-exclusive gaming, you're going to pick up a PlayStation 4 and potentially a PlayStation 5. Um, they could, they're still going to have their exclusive deals with Destiny, and they can still buy their way to exclusive deals with other companies. Um, so I, just, I don't think they have anything to worry about. Um, but I think the gaming community can come together and change how Sony's, uh, Sony's view on crossplay. Um, cool, those were two really big things that I wanted to cover this week. Um, I'll get off my soapbox now and stop talking about my opinion and just run through the news now. Um, there is a, a, recent, a recent gaming report that came out, a psychological study, I should say, that talked about... Um, why we play video games, and there was a there was a bunch of different reasons. I don't have the I should have had this linked open uh, right now. In fact, I can. Um, give me two seconds. And they talked about everything from uh, you know just just trying to break away from the daily life or from day to day life. Talk about people wanting to feel progress. You have the power. Uh, God, what's the, what's the phrase for that? Power something. But wanting to gain power, uh, you know, feel powerful in a video game. Um, there was uh, people wanting to, you, you know, expletive, kind of like, I want to find the problems, I want to solve this, kind of maybe the, pu the puzzly aspect. But the number one reason they claimed and I'll have to look more into detail, was immersion. People want to be transported into worlds, uh, become fully immersed, and, and um, 
and just experience something that is out of the norm. Now, that might have some commonalities with, I want to be immersed in something to get out of the world. I want to be immersed in something um, to feel powerful. I want to be, you know, immersed in feeling powerful. Um, so I could see how there's cross along, along all of that, but I thought it was pretty interesting to uh, hear that. Um, I always like to hear about why people play video games, so that was really cool to see. Um, and I'll send a link to that <coughs> in, uh, in my YouTube, uh, my YouTube wrap-up. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, Pokemon Go's got Pikachu and Squirtle Squad coming to it, uh, this summer. I don't know which one's live and which one's coming out soon. I think Squirtle, Squirtle Squad's coming out soon, and Pikachu, uh, Pikachu with sunglasses is, is coming out for the anniversary, and it's Squirtle Squad, I think it's coming later this month. Um, oh, being a sales analyst, uh, I used Steam Spy a lot, and uh, Valve recently killed it with like how it collected data um, via the Steam output. And so Valve has come out claiming that they're going to make a better Steam Spy with Blackjack and hookers. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, they said that they're going to come out with a better tool that people can use. Uh, whether or not they charge you for it, I'm not sure. Um, but it's cool that Valve understands that people were using this tool and they want to allow people to uh, f figure out the same kind of analysis that they could do with that tool um, and use it uh, and maybe make their own. Maybe that's more accurate. Um, but that would be pretty cool. Um, so there is, Valve is working on that. Uh, I don't know if I talked about it here, but in a lot of my E3 wrap-ups, I talked about, you know, what are the cool things coming out of E3? And that was Hollow Knight came out on the Switch. Um, I think during the week of E3, they might have even launched on the day that my, the Nintendo press conference was. Um, they recently, the creators of, of Hollow Knight recently came out and sold the, uh, t said that they had sold uh, 250,000 units um, so far on the Switch. So that's pretty cool. I, I might actually pick that up. I've got a lot of stuff that I'm playing on the Switch now with Mario plus Rabbids. I'm going to pick up Darkest Dungeon because I saw some DLC was coming out and it was for sale in the uh, Steam sale, but I want to play it. I like playing those kind of games on my Switch. And I might even pick up Hollow Knight. Um, so... There was that. It's pretty cool. Hollow Knight looks good. Tell me if you like it, if you have picked it up. Um, what else came out? Someone created a, a free PC version of PT. Uh, just a recreation. That sounds pretty cool. Um, I'll have to send a link to how you can make, how you can get that if you want to like get that. Um, another big thing, actually. Anthem had a 20-minute uh, gameplay demo uh, I didn't watch the actual live event. I only picked it up in my, my video game news feed. Um, it looked pretty cool. Yeah, Anthem looks... I still don't quite get it because they haven't shown like the loot system, and if it's going to be a looter shooter, then I need to know more about that. But the gameplay looks fun. They have the drop-in, drop-out. That's always good. Um, so it is kind of going for that Destiny audience. Um... What else? The combo tactics seem pretty cool. The class system... I'll have to get a... I don't know if I got enough to see, like, oh, this is this is how each class works, and this is how you can do that. I Like, a character tutorial would be kind of cool, and how, like, you could branch off, because it showed two of the same class in the demo, which, if you have four-player squads, and you're going to demo the game, I don't know why you would have two of the same class, unless they, you know haven't like finalized how the fourth class works um but they're like oh it can be completely different would have been nice to see how different that can be i guess they had one that was more artillery and one that was more like up up in your face tanky um but all in all it looks it looks interesting um it, you know i might or might not play destiny 2 i don't know when red dead multiplayer is coming out i will be playing fallout 76 and i don't know how long of a tail that will have um, so Anthem could be on my list. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, 
the open world exploration kind of stuff looks looks pretty interesting. I didn't know if it was like shared world. That's one thing I didn't quite understand in the demo. Um, but or if you just drop in when someone's in a mission and like puts out a beacon flare, maybe you can fire a flare like in uh, Monster Hunter. Um, but that should be interesting. I've, I'm gonna keep my eye on Anthem of the three games that are coming out on February 22nd, 2019. Uh, that might be the one I, I'm more likely to pick up. Um, last but not least, uh, more Fallout news. Fallout 76, the song in the trailer, uh, Country Road, originally done by, I don't even know if that's the right name, uh, originally done by John Denver, has been re-released uh, for 99 cents on the iTunes store, uh, but it's not done by John Denver. It's done by, I think, the Co-Pilots or something like that. Maybe that's the name of the band. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it's being sold on the iTunes store and the proceeds, 100% of the proceeds are going to Habitat for Humanity. So I've already purchased it on my phone, um, so that I can have that, uh, so I can play that anytime I want to feel jazzed about Fallout 76. Um, but I thought that's pretty cool. Just a 99 cent republishing of a song and all of it's going to Habitat for Humanity. So, um... That sounds good. Uh, that's it for the video game news this week. Uh, a lot of big things. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, all of this will be put on YouTube tomorrow morning. Um, but anybody who's watching now, I appreciate you watching. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Cool. That should be it. That was pretty good.